Welcome back. Saving your skin with summer just around the corner. Let's face it, it already starting to feel like it. This morning, we are helping you better protect yourself from the sun. So to talk about this, dermatologist Dr. Shawnee Kuros joins us via Zoom this morning. Good morning. We're happy to have you. Good morning. Thank you. Great to be here. For sure. So we've heard it time and time again. Do not forget that sunscreen. But let's face it, some sunscreens work better than others. What SPF should people be using every day? That's a great question that a lot of my patients ask me every day. And the answer is the best sunscreen is the one that you like to use because it's really important to maintain that habit every day. And so I work with my patients to find one that is tailored to be best for them because there are so many options out there. Now, in terms of SPF, it's a good question because it's true that the level of difference in the SPFs actually diminishes the higher up you go. So for example, the difference between no sunscreen and SPF 15 is the biggest difference. The difference between 15 and 30 is still significant but not as big of a difference as wearing no sunscreen at all. And then after SPF 50, the difference in the higher SPFs really goes down significantly. So for most of my patients, for just their everyday activities, I tell them that wearing a moisturizer with SPF 30 should, should be pretty good. You know, but if a person's gonna be going to the beach or gonna be outdoors doing sailing, sports, or you know, outdoors playing golf, something that is gonna be high intensity sun exposure for a long period of time, that's when those smaller differences with higher SPF will actually start to make a difference. And so for high intensity sun exposure activities outdoors, SPF 50 or above then becomes important. So is there anything we should look for specifically when shopping for sunscreen? You know, we hear about all these different ingredients. What do you recommend? I recommend mineral sunscreens for my patients rather than chemical sunscreens. And by mineral sunscreens, I mean the ones where when you flip over the bottle and look at it in the ingredients, it has small names that are easy to pronounce like zinc and titanium versus the chemical sunscreens. When you look at active ingredients, you'll see these big long chemical names like benzophenone and avobenzone and things like that. And, you know, I recommend the mineral sunscreens because they actually work better in terms of protecting the skin against a broad array of the radiation that we get from the sun. Uh, for example, not just UVB and UVA radiation, which those are the only ones that the chemical sunscreens are designed to protect you against, but the mineral sunscreens will cover that range and also protect from visible light, which we are increasingly learning in research can lead to not only skin cancer, but aging of the skin. And then also uh, other forms of damage, for example, pollution. In recent years, we've learned a lot about the role of pollution in aging the skin and causing skin cancer. And mineral sunscreens provide better protection against that as well. So we've only got a few seconds here, less than a minute. So real quick, when it comes to signs of skin cancer, what exactly should people be looking for? The most important factor in being concerned for skin cancer is whether a spot is changing or has become ulcerated or bleeding. So if you notice a spot on your skin that's changing or growing in any way or becoming symptomatic, it's important to see your dermatologist. Excellent information. Thank you so much, doctor. We appreciate your time as always and have a great day. Thank you, you too.